And we're back, dear viewers, to welcome our dearest guest with us. We'd like to welcome Dr. Anwar Ibrahim. We're really happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. We're really glad to have you, of course. And um, when it comes into your profession, especially about the achievements that you, let's say, will known about, which is, uh, for, let's say, being there when it comes into building Ijdadi Akwa University, we're really happy to have you here. Starting with that, we're going to move to our question, which is, Choosing the career, was it always something that you always dreamed about having uh, the career of civil engineering and reaching towards today? Actually, no, I never had this, um, um, that, that wish. I always wanted to be a teacher, so yeah. a math teacher in high school. And in my third year of university, uh, I had a change of career or a change of uh, wishes. And still, I, I became a teacher, but in the higher education. And the, the reason I chose civil engineering is that at the, uh, when I graduated from high school, I thought I want to go abroad uh, to pursue my education. And, and the only place I was allowed to go to is Italy because my mom's is Italian. So yes. that was the only place I was allowed to go to. And I was choosing architecture. Not that I'm fond of it, but it's just Italy. So architecture is the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, when I came back uh, to prepare myself for the departure, I just had um, a feeling of no, that's not exactly, I don't want to be away from home, I don't want to be away from my friends and from my country. I guess it's the homesick that I had, an early homesick. So I decided I'm going to stay in Kuwait and at that time we did not have the College of Architecture in Kuwait, so uh, we, uh, the closest to architecture was the civil engineering. So I enrolled and with a high GPA I got accepted from my first uh, choice and uh, and that's how it started and once I started um, I got I, yeah, I fell in love with it yeah. and the uh, the the plan was to graduate and and go to the uh, Minister of Education and be a teacher actually in high school but then in the third year um, a dear friend um, uh, just gave me the idea why don't you pursue uh, a PhD and then you'll be back as a teacher and you would fulfill your wish and teach but uh, the uh, older students yes so uh, that was it, and I started from the third year work on, I started working on my GPA to, uh, to improve it because there was a competition to get the seats for the scholarship. And uh, fortunately I got it and I went and that's how it ended. So and it's really great to hear about the whole idea itself, that you've actually thought of education at the beginning as being a teacher, as someone to, let's say, teach learners with different ages, uh, regarding when you just highlighted about high school students. Um, this something is really interesting because uh, choosing a career which is of course being an engineer and also choosing the uh, career of teaching uh, having it all in balance and also working on programs is something challenging especially that you're not only dealing with learners with let's say 18 and above but there are varieties of, uh, of learners that actually come to the university tell us more about that let's say experience itself well i think it's just um it's it's teaching no matter what the age would be, it's just the passion of teaching. Um, when, once I started teaching at the university, I really found out that I was not, I'm not good with younger ones. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was blessed uh, that God chose me, chose, chose the path and yes. brought me to that position. In the same, in the meanwhile, I also worked in the construction. So during that stage, um, I had the freshly graduate engineer that you don't teach them as much as you guide them. So you have um, the teaching in, because I used to work in the construction and teach at the same time. So you would be teaching uh, in the university and then you would be guiding in the construction field. So it was a challenging, but it's it's an experience that I'm so grateful of. Yes, and really proud of, to be honest, especially when it comes into the end, when it comes into flourishing your work and seeing everything is actually achieved and presented to everyone nowadays. Tell us about that feeling, especially the moment that, because we've always seen and heard that um, uh, the one who has to, let's say, mind and have to, um, uh, let's say, getting busy into do two different fields cannot actually master them both. But mashallah, you actually managed to do that. Tell us about that experience. How it, did it feel? So it far? was challenging. It was very challenging, uh, keeping in mind that I have a family too. So, uh, it, and I always say, um, you can't be perfect in all in all aspects. Uh, there are some sacrifices that you have to do, but I also think if this is your path, you get the blessing of God. He would always send you with the uh, 
a support, whatever the support, whether it's friend support, family support, uh, colleague support, and I was really blessed with that. Um, uh, um, all what I can say is that um, when when you start a path and you want to complain about it, then all the problems will happen. But if you feel blessed and you take every opportunity as a learning opportunity, then you will always find the strength and the people surrounding you to help you go through it. So I have to admit, it was challenging, but I always, always had the support. Yes, and we're really glad about that. And uh, having the support is something really important, especially when it comes, when it comes from the family, friends, and surrounding itself. Um, moving on towards uh, your passion. Of course, we've heard that, and you just highlighted that you like to teach. But when it comes into your spare time, the things you like to do, especially, let's say you've been busy within the last years that you've been working on, but finally you're relieved, let's say, somehow, looking at the things that you accomplished. The things you like to do, especially when it comes into your free time, leisure time, what are your hobbies? Um, actually, I crochet. So this is something I do to, to de-stress. Mm -hmm. um, um, for the past nine month while, uh, nine years while I was doing the construction uh, career, um, I left the, um, the working out, the gym, the exercising, so I went back to that. And now I'm in the two years of sabbatical and I'm starting to work on my research and planning to have publications to be able to um, uh, move from assistant professor to uh, associate professor. Yes, and um, talking about crochet, this is something really grabbed my attention because uh, people do sometimes see it as uh, uh, for the ones who doesn't like to go outside, more of the people who like to sit at home and uh, let's say enjoy their uh, me time, let's say. So are you the kind of person that actually enjoys sitting by yourself, taking let's say a cup of tea and enjoying doing your crochet, uh, crochet let's say, uh, yeah. I'm very social and I like people and I'm always out. But um, crocheting is something I learned, uh, well, let me say, because I have the Italian background, so yes. uh, in Italy it's part of the um, brought up or the uh, raising uh, of any female is that she has to have a craft, mm -hmm. whether it's knitting or crocheting or uh, stitching. Any of those, you have to have them. So um, I had my grandmother, uh, that she, she she was the one because my mom used to tell me that I'm not patient enough to teach you so sit with your grandmother so my grandmother actually taught me knitting and crocheting at the beginning um, as a kid you're not just fond of it but uh, when I traveled to the States during my PhD I started having some um, some beginning of depression maybe mm -hmm. because of the stress and being Indeed. away from home and I remember my mom she, she told me why don't you start crocheting so then I started my grandmother taught me the basics, the stitches, but then uh, while I was in the States, brought, bought some books and self-taught myself how to actually do projects. And it, I took it since then. So now crocheting to me is whenever I am stressed or whenever I have something that I need to think of, it's when I do crocheting. So my husband, once he sees me crocheting, he's like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. He knows this, yeah. but I love doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would be working and my mind would be somewhere else. And that's really great because people do sometimes um, uh, miss direction when it comes into feeling uh, into that point that you wish to. So it's very important for a person to actually find a hobby or something to relieve themselves uh, rather than, let's say, being in the spot and not knowing what to do. Um, when, when it comes into the story that you just mentioned uh, by, let's say, going to Italy and choosing the career, uh, especially that your mom is Italian. Tell us more about your mom. Like, was she emphasizing on you to choose the career, let's say, of engineering? Because we know that moms do care. And as I can see from the experience, she really knew the best that going to Italy will actually help you since you have family there, rather than going to the States and feeling more away from the family. I think my mom wanted me to be out for my, my, my uh, undergraduate is for me to have this exposure exposure to culture and different culture different people and just not to be closed in in just one culture and one life but um, I think God did not want me to take that career at that early age mm -hmm. um, engineering she never pushed me uh, to go through engineering uh, neither architecture she wanted me just to be abroad 
And it did not happen in my undergraduate. And I'm always, always grateful that I did not take that path because during Kuwait University years, I think if somebody asks me what were your most glamorous years, um, my, my answer is the five years I had in, in Kuwait University. Not that my life after that was not glamorous or not fun, but just that five years, beautiful years. So uh, no, she did not have, but she always wanted me to be um, a strong, independent woman. Yeah. Um, because to her, that's it's like you, you Kuwaitis have to show that you are strong. Um, but no, she never pushed me to, to engineering. It happened to be. Yes, and it's really uh, great to hear uh, because uh, parents do uh, understand, uh, let's say, uh, the whole image about their kids and do they actually guide them when it comes into that sense? Because, you know, at that age, you start to be feeling, let's say, I am responsible myself, I can do whatever and so on. But it's really uh, good to give them the space to explore themselves. Uh, as you just mentioned, talking about Kuwait University in the past and now, Days, of course, especially that you've been a student uh, in that, let's say, particular time. Uh, comparing it between the past and nowadays, uh, how do you feel about it? Like, to be honest, for me, I'm really jealous from all of the <laughs> new students now. I think um, if if we're talking about the uh, the buildings itself and the campus itself, they're definitely luckier than us. But um, as a generation, I always say every generation comes with their uniqueness, yes. with with their uh, beautiful thing and difficult things. And I'm sure that our generation was the same to whoever taught us. So whenever anybody tells me that this generation is maybe a difficult generation or hard to deal with, I, I don't accept that. I always say that we have to understand the, the generation. And when you do understand them, they would work with you the way you want. It's just don't fight them. Don't fight them hard. Keep, keep on showing them what they have to do, but in their language and in their way. Uh, so yes, it is challenging, but um, um, they're lucky to be where they, wherever they are now because we all wished to have the campus that they are having now. Uh, uh, and it's fun teaching them. Yes, and it's really great to, to see these kind of things that are actually happening within the country, especially for the generation. As you just mentioned and highlighted, it's very important to keep in mind that each generation is different, and especially when it comes into uh, giving them their space and the things that they actually need is something really important and to emphasize on it in the same time. But also when it comes into uh, yourself, with the family, with the friends, how do you, let's say, um, uh, you um, try to join them when it comes into, let's say, your a daily routine, especially that uh, um, Dr. Anwar, when, we, when it comes into being a civil engineer and also uh, um, a professor teaching uh, at university, you do actually, let's say, lack time when it comes into that perspective. But at the same time, you need to socialize with them and bring them all together. I always believe that friendship never ends. You always create new friends. And if you find friends in your working uh, um, a circle, you don't need to find time you're there with them, you're working yes. with them and you're being friends with them. Uh, but then you have the weekends, you have your days off, uh, you manage once a week, uh, twice a week, um, it's manageable. And and I always believe that true friends don't need a lot of time. True friends are there whenever you need them. So yes, having friends in your workspace, uh, which people usually avoid that, but finding friends within your workspace uh, helps you to have time to be with them while you're working, so that's saving time. And at the same time, your dear friends would not mind that you're not seeing them very frequent because they would uh, understand your situation. Yes, and of course, let's say with the help of social media, we actually exactly. can manage. Let's exactly, say. exactly. Yes. Keep in touch with everyone. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was really a pleasure having you here, and we wish you all the best when it comes into your uh, career and for social media. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. With that, dear viewers, we're going to continue the rest of the episode, so stay tuned with us.